What up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be ranking book characters. Say what? Is this like the trendy thing to do right now? Rank things? Rank your plants? Rank noses? Ranking mugs? It's been all over Twitter lately, and I know that people have been making videos where they rank different books and whatnot. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. Obviously, I'm going to be putting my own twist on it. So today, I'm going to be ranking book characters. From god tier, to not quite god tier, to great tier, to average tier, meh tier, bad tier, and electric chair tier. I went over on my Instagram, at Jesse the Reader if you want to follow me and I asked you guys to submit some fictional characters. So I'm going to be taking some of those fictional characters and I'm going to be ranking them using this system today. A part of me wants to give a disclaimer, but I'm not going to. Zips to the lips. No disclaimer today. As I'm doing this, you guys should play along in the comments and let me know your rankings for these characters as well. Let's rank it up, my dudes. The first character that I'm going to rank is Kel. Kel hails from the A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. He can travel between alternate versions of London. He's strong-willed and finds himself in trouble often. I think Kel is a wonderful character albeit I haven't explored his character to the fullest because I haven't finished the trilogy yet because I am a monster. But what I do know about him, I like. And the fact that he can travel between alternate versions of London, I want that for myself. He also just has major coat goals. Like, can I get a coat like that, please? Send it to my P.O. Box. I like that he's a character that thrives on adventure. I think I'm gonna place him on great tier because I don't know the full extent of his character yet, so we can't go above that level just yet. Maybe someday, Kel, but that day is not today. Next, we've got Snape. Snape hails from the Harry Potter series. He's got a sour attitude. He's filled with secrets, and he's quite literally the professor in school you'd avoid at all costs. Snape, 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 Snape. Oh, Snapey boy. You know, back when I first read the Harry Potter series, I really didn't see anything wrong with Snape. That's because I was uneducated. I've since had an awakening. I've been educated, and I've realized how not great of a character he is through and through. And you know, I get that he grew up with things being rough. Like, he was bullied, and that's probably why he's a bully of a professor. But there's a point where you take things too far, and he reached that point. In fact, he exceeded that point. I'm gonna have to put him in the bad pain. Next up, we've got Enoch. Enoch hails from the Peculiar series. He's a disturbing character who enjoys morbid things. I almost want to place him in the electric chair tier because I feel like he would enjoy that. Enoch is probably one of the most disturbing characters that I've ever read about. One of his hobbies is putting hearts in dolls and making the dolls come to life. Like, hello, creepy. That is creepy. Enoch be like, do the creep, do the creepy, creepy, do the creep. But on the other hand, he does kind of bring some entertainment to the series and boy does he bring some conflict too. I'm gonna place him in the average tier. Like, He's not great, he's not meh, he's just average. Next character we have is Cress. Cress hails from the Lunar Chronicles series. She's a Rapunzel type character. She's got mad hacking skills and got an overwhelming amount of smarts. Can't relate to that. Cress is absolutely positively one of my favorite characters to come out of the Lunar Chronicles series. Her banter with Thorn in particular is just top notch. The chemistry there is unmatchable. Who needs chemistry class when you've got the chemistry between those two? I think she's not only a great character because of her personality, but I also feel like she brings a lot of skills to the table. She got mad skills, bruh. And I really think that she becomes one of the most vital members to join the crew. The Lunar Chronicles Avengers, if you will. I was originally just gonna place her in the not quite god tier, but like now that I've talked it out, she's god tier, y'all. She deserves it. She has earned her slot. Next up, we have the Darkling. The Darkling hails from the Grisha trilogy. He's a light dimmer. He's charming, but he's dark minded. Electric chair. Done. I get the appeal of the Darkling. I do, I do, I do. But I personally don't like the Darkling. I'm not gonna sit here and give you a TED talk on why I don't like him because I'm not here to convince you to not like him. Do what you gotta do. If you like him, then live your best Darkling life. But for my taste, ah, not a fan. Do not stand. In fact, not a fan. He gets a full on ban. Next up, Sirius Black. Sirius Black hails from the Harry Potter series. He's a Gryffindor. He's loyal and boy has been through it. Here's the deal. The 411. Sirius Black is my problematic fave. We all have one and this is mine. I was reading an article the other day that was like everything wrong with Sirius Black that we all choose to ignore and I was like, yep, it me. He bullied Snape. He's not the best with his words. Words. He doesn't think before he speaks, and he's a full-on rule breaker. And yet, just like how a lot of people love the Darkling, I love Sirius Black. So for me personally, he's god tier. Next up, we've got L. L hails from the book Geekerella. She's a fangirl and just doing her best navigating life despite her rough family situation. Yo, L is great. She's a solid character. Just like how Cinderella went through it, L is going through it. She's lost her father. She's got an awful step family, and she's just trying to figure out herself. She's also relatable to the tenth degree with all her fandom involvement. So we'll place her in the great tier right next to Kel. Next up, we've got Victor Vale. Victor hails from the book Vicious. I would say he's got a bit of a coldness to him. He's one that goes about life without a care in the world, and he's just a bit on the off side. This is difficult because boy is not good. Like, he is, mm, nope, not good. Makes bad choices. All the bad choices. No, 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 no. I can't be on his side when it comes to the choices he makes, but on the flippity flip side, ooh, I love this character. Victoria Schwab did that. She created this monster that I just somehow can't not love. He's so complex 
and interesting, which is what made him such a great character to read about. Like, I loved following his journey. So to that degree, I want to put him on the god tier. But looking at his motives and the choices he makes, I want to flop him onto the bad tier. Maybe even the electric chair. I think I'll settle with the middle here, so the average tier, even though he is not average. While I find him to be a fascinating character, I don't feel good about putting him in the god tier, so average he goes. The next character that we have is Simon Lewis. Simon hails from the Mortal Instruments series, he's nerdy, he's a music lover, manga reader, and a loyal friend. I would 100% put him on the god tier if it weren't for some of the choices that he makes throughout this series. I'm talking about you, City of Fallen Angels. So I know that a lot of things kind of trace back to miscommunication. That's a big thing throughout the entirety of the Mortal Instruments series. Miscommunication! But to prevent petty drama and useless conflicts, you gotta communicate, bub. So I'm gonna pop him on the not quite god tier. Close to god, but not close enough. The next character we have is Star. Star hails from the hate you give. She stands up for herself and for other people. She's got good instincts and does what needs to be done. I know where she goes. She goes to the god tier. She's out here doing the most. She deserves to be god tier. And she is put through it in this book. Angie Thomas be like, no rest for my characters. You're gonna be dropped into a ringer and have at it. A few drop kicks later and they're finally out of the ring. But seriously, the way that Star handles herself throughout all the turmoil that she faces and the way she pushes herself to continue fighting despite being drained, it's just super admirable and inspiring. She's a character that displays traits that makes you want to strive to be more like her. Next character is Jem Carstairs. Jem. 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 People always criticize the way I say Jem. 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 J-E-M. Jem. Jem Carstairs. Jem hails from the Infernal Devices trilogy. He's a great friend. He's pretty close to perfect, but at the same time also has some flaws. Literally, how can you not stand Jem Carstairs? Even people who prefer Will over Jem, deep down in their hearts, love Jem. It's just how it is. I don't make the rules. He's the kind of character where you're just like, can you just do something a little off so I have some kind of reason to hate you? He checks basically all the boxes on what I love in a character. Loyal, selfless, humble, and flawed. Check, 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 checkmate. So, god tier it is. As if he couldn't guess where that was going. The next character that we have is Brighton. Brighton hails from Infinity Sun. He's a video maker, willing to do whatever it takes to get the shot, and is a bit of a jerk, if I'm being real. Honestly, electric chair. No thinking behind this one. Electric chair it is. The fact that he reminded me of Jake Paul as I read Infinity Sun is not a good sign. Like, hello, red flag. I see ya. Alarms are going off in my head that this is not a good character. I truly despise him, and yet that's what makes him an interesting character to read about. He's not super likable. I will say that. And I normally like unlikable characters, but this one, oof, grinded my gears. I'm hoping maybe he has a bit of a redemption arc, but for now, electric chair it is. Next up, Mateo Torres. Mateo hails from the book They Both Die at the End. He's a video game lover. He's a soft child, and he just wants to hide away from the world. A whole mood, basically. Our introverted little bean, he's a really solid character, and I think that I want to put him in the great tier, because that's where I feel like he fits in my mind. He's just great. It is what it is. Next up, we have Charlie. Charlie hails from the book The Perks of Being a Wallflower. He's quiet, observant, and is just looking for friends in high school. Well, this is an easy peasy lemon squeezy decision for me to make. He's going to the god tier. A character who recognizes they have issues and works on them. We love character development. That's god tier. And my bias eyes anyways. Not a character who's perfect through and through. That's boring tier to me. Next up, we've got Carden. Carden hails from the Cruel Prince trilogy. He's cruel. He's awful. He's terrible. He's bad to the bone, but he comes with a backstory. I feel like his anthem would be Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Here's the deal. I get why he is the way that he is, albeit I haven't fully explored his character yet because I've only read the first book, but his cruelness levels are just a little too high. But like I said, I haven't read the full trilogy, so I don't know the full extent of his character. Maybe he comes through with some redemption points, brings his cruel level down a few notches, but for now, I'm planting him in the bad tier. Next up, we have Levi. Levi hails from the book Fangirl. He's down to earth. He loves a good plaid shirt and is tall. I can hardly remember any of his personality traits, so that's all I've got for you guys. It's funny because looking back, I remember really liking Levi's character, but I also don't remember what it is. Like, nothing really sticks out to me in my mind as I'm thinking back on him. I know that he was there for Kath, which was really nice. Maybe he was a charming character? I don't know. I need a refresher, but I'm just gonna place him in the meh tier because that's where I'm gonna put him. I don't know where else to put him. I'm sorry. Did I just break some Levi love in hearts? I'm sorry. My B. Maybe I should reread Fangirl soon. Next up, we've got Lyra. Lyra hails from the His Dark Material series. She's feisty, enjoys doing things that could potentially get her in trouble, and is very sneaky. Lyra is a full-on mischievous character, which is something that I actually really enjoy in characters because it makes them spicy, 
for lack of better words. Like mischievous characters do the Lord's work and bring some conflict into the story. But at the same time, she's just a character that I felt okay about, so I'm just gonna chuck her into the meh category. I'm sorry, Lyra. I also just kind of have meh feelings about the first book, The Golden Compass Anyways, which is the only book in the trilogy that I've read so far, so meh tier it is. Next up, we have Magnus Bane. Magnus hails from the Shadowhunter Chronicles. He's a full-on icon. He's older than any of us will ever be and has lived through more than we could ever imagine. No doubt about it, it's God tier for Magnus. I mean, come on, it's Magnus. We gotta keep the respect in his name. It's what he deserves. He's put the work in. Like, boy shows up in pretty much every Shadowhunter book. He's been through it. The amount of annoying characters that he's had to deal with, like how? We need to be praying for Magnus Bane. The patience he has is just unimaginable. He's also just been through it all living as long as he's been living, and he still manages to deliver humor and snark in every book he appears in. Truly a legend. Next up, we have Lara Jean. Lara Jean hails from the two All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy. She's a bit on the shy side, is very family oriented, and loves a good baking session. Book nerd confession time. I've only seen the movies, and I oop. Maybe I deserve the electric chair tier, but hey, I love the movie version of Lara Jean. I like her enough to put her in the great tier. Had I read the books, maybe she'd be higher, but great tier it is. The last character that we have is August Flynn. August hails from the This Savage Song duology. He's kind of quiet, but he's got an edge to him, and he's a violinist, though when he plays a violin, something out of the ordinary happens. I feel like August is a really underrated character, actually, like, he is super solid. He just has such a fascinating story, and his violin abilities, like, come on now, the power he has. I'm gonna place him in not quite God tier, because I don't feel like he's God tier necessarily, but, like, he's up there. He's right next to Simon Lewis. Okay, that was ranking fictional characters. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments in what place you would rank these characters, so let me know your rankings down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye-o!